If you are interested in getting some hands-on experience with electronics, a good place to start is with some basic circuit construction. In this video we will discuss how to use solderless breadboards to construct and test circuits. If you haven't already done so, view our video on electricity and circuits. For a review of resistors and Ohm's law, take a look at our short video covering these topics. To get started you will need a power supply. We can create one with a standard small 9 volt battery. Never experiment with anything that plugs into a wall outlet. Commonly available connectors snap onto the battery providing two wire leads. Red is positive, black negative. Don't touch the two leads together. This creates a short circuit. The wires will get hot, you might burn yourself, and the battery will rapidly lose charge. To complete this simple power supply, connect a 470 ohm resistor to the black negative battery lead. You can twist the two leads together and then tape them, or if you have a soldering iron, you can solder them together. Use electrical tape to cover all bare metal on the connection. This will prevent an accidental short circuit. A 470 ohm resistor has the color bands yellow, violet, brown. If you don't have a 470 ohm resistor, use any resistor between 470 and 1000 ohms. This resistor is important. It reduces current, preventing overheating in the case of a short circuit, and it protects LEDs. You must use a resistor when connecting an LED to most batteries. LEDs cannot tolerate high current. The LED will be damaged without the proper resistor and you could be injured. With the snap connector in place and the resistor connected, we can create a circuit with an LED. Electrons flow from the negative battery terminal, through the resistor, through the LED, ending at the positive terminal. Now let's build this circuit on a breadboard. This is a breadboard. The name comes from a time when electronic circuits were constructed on a wooden board, similar to the type of board you would make or cut bread on. A breadboard. This modern breadboard is designed to work with most electronic components. Look closely and you can see that the rows on the breadboard are numbered. And the columns are labeled with the letters A to J. I'll start by plugging an LED across the center of the board at locations 10E and 10F. The negative lead of the LED is at 10E, the positive lead at 10F. To complete the circuit, we will plug the negative battery lead into 10A and the red positive lead into 10J. If you try this and your LED doesn't light, make sure it is installed the right way around. The negative lead of the LED has a flat spot on the edge of the plastic globe. Here is how these boards facilitate circuit building. The negative black lead is connected to the LED by a metal conductor under the holes from 10A to 10E. Similarly, on the other side, the LED is connected to the red positive lead by a metal conductor under the holes 10F to 10J. This means you can plug the black lead into any of the holes 10A, B, C or D. The metal bar ends at 10E. This is true for the positive side of the board also. But if you connect to a different row, row 11 for example, the LED won't light. Each row is separated by an insulating plastic barrier. Move your LED to a different row. Reconnect it by connecting the battery leads to that row. If your LED doesn't light, check the LED, it might be backwards. Building complex circuits requires multiple battery connections, and breadboards have a nice feature that make it easy to connect to the power supply. 
The long rows of holes beside the red and blue lines on the board are power lines. A long metal conductor runs the full length of the board under each row of holes. For this demonstration, we are using the red and blue lines closest to the inside of the board. To energize the power lines, plug the negative black battery lead in beside the blue line, and the positive red battery lead in beside the red line. It doesn't matter which hole you plug into, all holes in each power line are connected. Now we need to connect the LED to the power lines. Take two short wires and connect one from the LED to the blue negative supply line and the other side to the red positive supply line. If the LED doesn't light, make sure it is the right way around. It is now easy to connect additional LEDs. Plug them across the center of the board, then use short wires to connect them to the power lines. We now have four LEDs connected. Are they connected in parallel or series? These LEDs are connected in parallel. Here's how you connect two LEDs in series. A reminder that experimenting with electricity can be dangerous. Ask your electronics instructor or other expert for help if you are new to this technology. And never experiment with anything that plugs into a wall outlet. Breadboards are available from many online electronic suppliers. Just search solderless breadboard. For more science and technology videos and projects, visit our website, hyloroad.com. Follow the projects link.